Hello, YouTube. This story is, to me, both like an episode in Twilight Zone and also Outer Limits. This happened to a scientist in the Soviet Union. Felix Belayartsev is considered the creator of the so-called perfluorine or perfluorine in English, a liquid capable of replacing human blood. However, the scientist was not allowed to continue working in this direction in the USSR. Belayartsev began to be persecuted by the KGB. In 1985, his dacha or country home was searched, but the Czechists, as the KGB operatives are nicknamed in the, in the former Soviet Union and modern Russia, they were not looking for a blood substitute at all. You see, Felix Fyodorovich Belayartsev was born in 1941 in Astrakhan in the family of a surgeon. So therefore, it's not surprising that after graduating from high school, Belayartsev decided to enroll in a medical university. Felix Fyodorovich achieved great success in his profession. At the age of 34, he became a doctor of medical sciences. And at 35, he was the head of the department of the Bakulev Institute of Cardiovascular Surgery. At the age of 38, he was the head of the Laboratory of Medical Biophysics of the Institute of Biological Physics of the USSR Academy of Sciences. This was uh, quite a prestigious institution. Now, at the Institute of Biological Physics, Felix Belayartsev became really interested in the medical use of perfluorocarbons. That is, he studied the possibility of adequate gas exchange by ventilation of the lungs with liquid media rich in oxygen. Similar studies were conducted before Belayartsev, but the experimental mice died because it was too hard for the chest muscles to pump fluid instead of air. Therefore, soon the scientific search moved into a slightly different direction. Back in the 1960s, the first attempt was made abroad, outside of the Soviet Union, to replace rat blood with perfluoroemulsion, emulsion, which was crowned with success. Professor Simon Schmoll, Schnoll of Moscow State University said that after learning about the work that was being carried out abroad, the Soviet government instructed domestic experts to deal with this topic or subject. According to um, authors uh, by the last name of Chueshov and Gladuch, authors of the publication Technology of Medicines of Industrial Production, in the 1970s, Felix Belayartsev finally created perfluorine, blood substitute. In 1984, Tests of perfluorine approved by the Ministry of Health of the USSR began. However, there is evidence that even the first experiment, that even at that time, the first experiment was actually carried out on a person. According to Russian journalist Anatoly Pankov, Belayarsov secretly confessed to him that in order to save the life of a girl who was in a car accident, he poured he poured per perfluorine into her. The child survived, and the result of the official experiments of the first phase of the entire research were impressive. Well, in the second phase of clinical trials of perfluorine, material was collected on the use of plasma substitute in 234 patients. Despite the fact that the results again turned out to be amazing, all research in this area was suddenly curtailed and Felix Belayartsev was subjected to real harassment. Felix Fyodorovich was hit basically by a flurry of the most ridiculous accusations. It seemed that the representatives of the KGB were looking for the slightest reason to defame and imprison the scientists. For example, Zigunenko in his book 100, secrets of med 100 Great Secrets of Medicine writes that Belayarza was accused of stealing alcohol from the laboratory with the proceeds of the, from the sale of which he allegedly built 
a country home. So he sold alcohol on the side and built himself a dacha or country home. That's what the KGB accused him. On December 17, 1985, investigators, together with Felix Fedorovich Belayartsev, went out of town to search his dacha. They hoped to find stacks of stolen alcohol in the country home, but nothing was found in the house that had not been re- the, ha- the house was not been repaired for a long time. It was not in a good condition. Belayartsev asked for permission to stay at the dacha where he committed suicide on the same day. Very unusual case, very strange. But what happened to his work? Well, Pert Foran is an emulsion of perfluorocarbons in a surfactant and electrolyte mixture. It was developed in Russia as an oxygen-carrying intravenous plasma additive for hemorrhagic anemia and ischemic conditions from various etiologies. It was approved for clinical use in Russia in 1996 and used by the Russian armed forces and in civilian medical care. It was also approved in Mexico, but from 2005 to 2010. It has been reportedly administered to over 35,000 patients with significant evidence of benefit and relatively mild and manageable adverse effects. It may have significant potential for use in hemorrhagic shock if human red blood cells are not available, and for several other applications, including treatment of vascular gas embolism, cerebral or spinal trauma, and regional ischemia. We had brilliant scientists in the Soviet Union who suffered a very sad fate, so to say. I told you about those who were basically uh, killed by Stalin's henchmen in the field of archaeology, Egyptology, as as a matter of fact, and other fields. And even Sergei Korolev, the father of the Soviet space uh, exploration science, he spent years in the concentration camp for scientists under Stalin. And as you can see, it wasn't even easier in the middle 1980s until Gorbachev came to power and everything changed. So I wanted to bring you this story. I will bring you other stories about the land of the lost inventions, unfortunately, how some people call the former USSR. And if you like my research, please kindly support it and please like my Uh, videos and subscribe to my channel. Thank you.